Now, many people from outside our world don't realise the enormous contribution that women have made to the operations of the Land Rights Act. Um, and there are thousands of them, tens of thousands of them. So let me introduce you to just three. So on my left is Yanan Munungor from the Japu clan of northeast Arnhem Land. And she lives at an, uh, a very famous outstation to the, down that way, um, Gatharlala. And then here on my right is Gina Smith uh, from the Gunaba clan in the Barclay region in Central Australian, in Central Australia. And then sitting next to uh, Gina is Lisa Ward, who's the daughter of Noelia Yukulji Ward, a Pindaby woman from the Kirikura uh, people, and uh, well, from the Kirikura community. Now, Noelia was uh, uh, one of the Pindaby people who came in from the desert for the first time in 1986 and uh, her daughter Lisa will interpret for her. So she's the last of that group who finally came in in 1986. Um, so um, I'll hand to Gina first. Gina, um, yeah. your, your father was a lawman and a leader and you have inherited his legacy and you're a leader yourself. Tell us how hard it is to juggle the obligations of the white world with the obligations of the Aboriginal world. Thank you, yep. So yeah, it certainly is a very um, difficult task to carry, um, but like I said, it's actually a cultural obligation. So whether I like it or not, I have to, I have to do it. I can try and run away, but you can't, because you have to come back and do it. Now, I've been away to study, like um, all of us young people, and I'm finding it very hard because I did go out to go and study. I had to leave my country and get, went to Alice Springs. Um, then had to come back and bring back what I learned, but also had to um, balance my culture within it. So, yes, they are my, um, my fathers, my father and his brothers were responsible. So, the Kunapa group, we are responsible for the young men's ceremonies, which happens every year. So, our group holds that. And it survived with the old people. Now, it's really sad, like many um, young groups in Tennant Creek region, we, we are a very young population. So my brother Gordon, who is here with us today, is the chairperson of our um, Aboriginal corporation called Manungura, which was set up, of course, to receive income from um, Butu Mine. So I'll talk a little bit about um, the two, I, have to, I um, yeah, operate under two, two of the acts, of course. So the Aboriginal Land Rights Act was able to give us um, our piece of land on the Rockhampton Down Station pastoral lease. And under the Native Title Act, I've, we had the mine that's on, on Banker Banker Station. Now, Banker Banker is still um, land that's going to be, we hope, that be um, given back to us because um, we've, my people actually wrote to the Land Commission in 1974, so two years before I was born. And Banky Banky Station, which is where the mine is, and of course where most of us all grew up, um, is the last piece of land that will tie up the Warramunga land claim, so that way I don't have to deal with the land right, a Native Title Act if we got the land rights settled at Banky Banky Station, so then all Warramunga land will be then claimed. The, what I find very hard is that because the, I've got very young men, the old people have passed, so Gordon was 55, and like Mr. Morrison himself, I'm a young elder that's third in line, so I'm in my mid-40s also. Um, and as a woman, it is very hard, very challenging. You always have to make sure that the old people un um, respect you as well, so respect is earned two ways. Um, but knowing who I am, speaking my culture, and I suppose speaking my language fluently and holding it strong is where I'm, how I've got the respect from the old men and they don't know how important that is to me because it's very, very hard.
Just one more question for you, Gina. Um, what's the pathway for the future of your people? I know you've spoken a little about it, but tell us some more. I know you've recently got solar power. Yeah, so, um, of course, then, um, education is one thing that's very, um, has, is important to all of us, but also um, having decent houses. So on, on our um, homelands, we have three little homelands. One's actually on this Brockhampton Down Station. It's actually an excision. So it's a, um, education. We have a school there with the education department, but it's 40 k's from the other two little homelands where I actually live to drive every day. And of course, um, the black soil is very difficult to get across when it's wet. So it limits your um, time either into town or to be at the school. So you're locked in during the winter, uh, sorry, the wet, land, wet season, I should say. Um, but in terms of us setting pathways for our young people, um, is that starting the school of the year, we wouldn't have been able to do that without having solo, so um, solo um, installed. And that's actually given that my family's opportunity to move back onto Homeland because majority of them are on Centrelink. That's the, um, that's the income that everyone gets. And um, diesel cost, of course, everyone knows how much it is. And if you rely on that as your power and water, that's $700 a week and it's very hard to try and do other things that you want to do on your land. Um, and that's allowed us to create, yeah, create opportunities for my young people. But we wouldn't have done that without having the income from the mine. So not all of us like mines, but sadly there's some of us that have rely on it and it's it's how we've used the money from the royalties to set up my family corporations now and um, and yeah and I hope that will be enough to sustain us in the future to achieve all my family's um, plans and pathways that we've chosen because we want to do it ourselves it's hard if you come out from the outside trying to tell me to do something that you want me to do no I, I can't I will, None of, our, none of us can't, because it takes us time to comprehend anything. New policies, of course, takes three months to understand. So allowing us to do things ourselves in our own way, but what made it easy for me is that using our income from the mine, because um, wouldn't have been able to give me the income or the finances to do what we were able to achieve. So, Jan and Mung, um, you're a great advocate for the homelands and for younger people's rights to live on your own land. Um, tell us about your struggle and do you see a sustainable future for your people living on your own lands? It's always been a struggle for younger people. Even ever since the Homelands Movement happened, it's been a struggle. There's been changes happening, government policy shift, welfare system change, and it's hard, hard when you, you're living at a um, at a homeland, I mean, it's hard. <coughs> Nowadays, with all, all the, um, with, with the struggle happening now, we have to, as a young person, we are always up there lobbying, lobbying with governments at the territory level and at the federal level, lobbying about what it is that we want, what it is that we want to achieve. Going back to the statement that Ngati made th um, this morning, Kalarui, about the Land Rights Act. <coughs> Yolngo, living at your own traditional clan estate, I feel personally, as a Yolngo person, that I don't have the right because of what's happening now. We are treated, we are still being treated as second class 
citizens of this nation. And it's very hard. It is, I can tell you that. It's very hard for, for a young person. Government, uh, um, bureaucrats, they don't see that. Great critical people, they don't see that our land and as a Yolngo person or as a traditional owner of your land, it is very important. They don't see, the outside world don't see that everything is important to a Yolngo person. And it's been a struggle for Yolngo people all along. And today we are still talking about it. We are still struggling. It all goes back to, um, like, like to the declaration as well, the rights of Yolngo people, indigenous people living in your own traditional estates. Government hasn't supported that. They haven't signed that, the United Nations Declaration, by more. So we are still being treated as second-class citizens of this world. And, and it's, I feel that, I know that. And here I am, and often when I go out, I still talk about these things. When will that time be? When will that time come? What will happen? And when we are talking about our kids, the future of our Jamarkoli, will they be talking about the same things when I die? Um, I know that you serve on many boards, that you're a, a very <coughs> strong leader for all Yolngu. Can you just tell us the name of some of the organisations that you lead? So. Um, the boards that you serve on? Okay. Um, I'm currently um, a land council member. I'm also um, a director for the Lenapui Homelands <coughs> Aboriginal Corporation. Um, I also <coughs> wear um, East Island Regional Council um, hat. And I also, I'm also a member of the Yambaripa School Councils. And so, in relation to the school, you have a school at Gathalala. I can't let you go without saying something about that fabulous school. Yeah. A <coughs> um, couple of years ago, right under the shelter, um, the former <coughs> government um, announced that they would... Um, set up the um, boarding facility project out at my homeland, my mother's homeland, Kartalala. That never happened. I promise that was broken. But myself, my mum and my dad, we, we wanted the school to still go on out at Kartala for, for the local kids. So we, we've been talking to um, the school council, Yambirpa, and also um, the t um, representatives from the territory government and representatives from the department you know, um, that we still want to see education happening at my homeland, as well as in the ho other homelands as well. Because when we, when we first, when the Homelands Movement first started way back in the 70s, our elders, our forefathers said that we want to educate our kids in, in our own homelands. And that it's been going on, despite the fact that the government broke that promise and now they're building it 
now they're building the um, boarding facility here in Nolanbui. It's something that I myself has stopped whinging about because it's no point crying over a spilt milk when government makes decisions. It's no point. <coughs> but I have carried um, that ongoing lobbying about um, education for our Chamarkoli um, to be based at Kartala, whether it be based at Kartala or Dalinboy or Brain Brain, Wandaoi, you know, and it's still going on with um, and the help of Yirkala Homeland School, people like Leon White, uh, um, the education, no, educators of our region, they come and help out and it's good that we still got that progr program go go happening for our homelands. And we'd, but we'd like to see it grow, develop. And we'd like others, when it comes to educating our kids, you have to give us that option, option where we want to send our kids to. If we want our kids to have an education out at Kartalala or Kangan, then that's our decision. If we want our send, if to want it, if we want to send our kids to Nolanbui or Darwin or elsewhere, that is our decision. Yeah. We don't want anybody else forcing us where we want to send send our kids. Thank you. Just, just briefly, are the teachers still camping in tents on the veranda? Sorry. Are the teachers still camping in tents on the veranda? Um, I think they're talking about, um, there is a um, facility out there that they can use now. Okay. Mm. And good. I think they're talking about upgrading the whole, whole um, facility. Okay. When, when I last spoke to um, Ken Davies and Tony Considine from the Department of Education. They said that they would upgrade the facility out at Kartala. Thank you. Thank you, Jan and Mo. <laughs> so, uh, now, uh, Noelia Yukulji Ward of the Pindaby people from Kiwakura will speak. She'll speak in her own language and Lisa, her daughter, will translate. So. Hello, everybody. Watching an army, mate, denying, denying, denying. I don't know, denying, and I'm fully no. Open a call in by a cook on a book on alcohol by. I have Para nan ko pa ay pujinga, ay ujiza na nagpraja. Para labian no rinareng marawala. Ninanguna, kulil pa na ninara. Majpila na pa, nyaro na jang jang pa chalgo. Majpila na, oh, katiya lo, katiya majpila ngal ko pa ay pungkula. Ngayu ko pa milo jang pa pungkula ko yung katiya ngal ko pa ay majpi. Jinala tu kulit bayang, mana raja bungko? Bungko je aku malah raja kati ya lo, kalau lo malah raja jinna apa? Orang jenar mulu orang itu dah jangan nama roka. Tadi nama roka angka, kumpi nu nama tangka. Yang kaya kuma mila jar baju pin, yon muar ini kejar pin. Orang jano, reja ringuna, purka ringuna, jenaka ringuna. Ia. 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 Ia.
um, with Jeremy Long and others. She came first time. She went to um, Kirgwa, where others were, and she went there and she saw other people, but her mother, my grandmother, she knew they were all the families living in there, Kirwa. And they've been, ta all my family's been taken out from bush, um, from, you know, that Lake Mackay, that big lake, in the middle of Australia. That's where my mother's country, my grandmother. We live in a Gibson desert. And we still live in there. We always looking after our country. We still stay in um, um we still there, people still there living. Still go out country looking, keeping strong. We always keeping strong our country. Yeah. Thank you. So when your mum came in, what did she think when she first saw white people? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I She said that um, first time she saw white fella, she reckoned she was a monster coming towards, <laughs> like a ghost coming to me, and she was scared. Running, hiding in a scrub, sent till hiding, group of family. But that white fella, he had someone that from Kirgwa telling them, family, come out, stop hiding. We all here. And there was one talking, oh, what that white fella looks like a ghost or monster, something else. Trying to come and Kill us and eat us, she reckoned. <laughs> That's what she reckoned. Uh, yeah. And she was a bit scared, too scared. So she, the white fella gave him clothes. She didn't want to wear it. <laughs> First time, you know, she didn't want to wear it, but still wear it. Then she jumped on her vehicle driving, she was looking at I. All this land moving, trees are moving, sand hill, <laughs> all moving. And she been stuck down on a vehicle, put his head down, asking her mum, mum, why is all these trees all moving? And she reckoned that all the trees, but she was moving on a vehicle. Yeah. Thank you. So, Noelia, it's been really hard for you since you came in, for your people. So, um, like, I know that um, a lot of sickness, you know, people going to hospital all the time. Um, you had the big floods and you had to leave your community. Um, can you see a future? What does your future look back, back like on your own water, on your own land? Jungle with our garden, 
Murar bila lokar mila ni kan turi. Mai mam, mai kapali, mai tora, lokar. Wah, kalau bina baju ni, lokar tu mau country. Ah, now people cik wan, mai mac pata way, pata pata way mam, way sista, mai praja drinking, crock. He's saying, um, today, like, right now, um, in our community, we don't have not much old people. They all die. Yeah, because not much old people, too much of sugar, kidney problem, dialysis going. Our old people in Alice Spring living in Thailand, only some at Kirkula, not much. Uh, yeah. And we still keep our uh, country strong. Looking after, we stay at home, we go out bush, and we work with the AP, um, IPA, land management. Look around country, like working together, white village, Aboriginal. Working together, looking at our country, looking after red coal, all that water soak. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.